Hey guys, I'm here with my 84 volt Nikla. I love this wheel. It's finally fully functional. It's been many weeks since uh, I originally got it and had fun with it, burned up the control board, a new control board, had problems with the fan. But finally, I have the new control board. I have a working fan. I just completed, I published uh, my first formal range test that I did with this wheel and I'm really happy with how it came out. I got uh, solid 50 miles on the wheel where I was, I was still riding at that point 18 miles per hour and uh, and for me most of my riding when I'm riding straight away and fast it's between 18 and 22 miles per hour sometimes I go up to 24 or 25 something like that so in those riding conditions 50 miles for me and I weigh about 180 pounds with all my gear on uh, the range test I got 54 miles out of it the last the four miles were slower 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 and I rode it until it tilted me back and it kicked me off the wheel so I'm really happy with the range on this guy and by the way, it's, it's black because I, I painted the white stri stripes because I just didn't like that look. And I painted the pedals black too. But you can never have too many Nicholas. <laughs> well, that's why I say it anyway. So I have here a 100 volt Nicola Plus. And I thought I would do a, a quick unboxing. Just pull it out and... Uh, just giving you my raw first impressions with it uh, and then I'm going to set it up I'll walk you through how I'm going to set up and put slime in the tire just for some of you guys that haven't seen that process uh, and, and actually before I do that I'm going to open up this wheel and I'm going to open up that guy so I'll show you how how it's configured inside differently very exciting I love uh, new wheels so so this is new uh, <laughs> a hat <laughs> this is really odd clearly it's some kind of a cover but uh, I have no idea what that is. Pads, just like the the base Nikola. And here we are. Ah, beautiful. black grip tape <laughs> well you, 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 you gotta tell you gotta give Godway credit for uh, moving fast with the times I mean they they released a new control board provided that free to all the people that bought the original Nikola they clearly got the feedback that those plastic fake grip tape that they had on the, on the original one that I had on this is crappy so um, they you know, put standard grip tape on it love it so this is the 1845 watt hour wheel this is 1600 and of course 100 volts I'm gonna be doing a range test on this after I set it all up and uh, with the identical route that I took on this. So it's gonna be very interesting to see how they compare because of course it's 100 volt, more powerful, perhaps it consumes more energy. We shall see. But they didn't listen to the community yet about that startup sound. Ah, so annoying. 
Okay, another oddity here. You probably can't see it very well, but this is where the voltage indicator is. And I've seen this on other people too, so I have a feeling this is another one of these Gotway uh, oddities. Uh, basically, I'm, I'm not getting the voltage. The 100 volt wheel, it's just showing dashes. What I think is that the hardware, that, that LED um, hardware they have in here was designed around the 84 volt wheel and they didn't feel like spending money to uh, update that. So you're not gonna get uh, voltage reading. Based on the fact that that's what I'm seeing and other people have reported the same thing. I don't particularly care because I just, I'm a, I'm a battery percentage guy. I'm not a, I don't really care what the voltage is. But that's an oddity. Uh, this is interesting. So they've gone with um, black, the, pillar, the pedal hangers are black. Now on mine, they were the, the raw aluminum, which I, I painted mine black, but uh, that's interesting. And the spacers, the spacers are black too. Huh. Yet they didn't go the extra step of, of black pedals, which I really think is a nicer look. Um... I have read that some someone said that they believe this was not just the basic sticker. It does look a little different and it does look higher quality than than you can see on on this one. I peeled it off, and and in the other one, it's it's peeling off too. Crappy uh, speakers. So off the bat, these do look nicer. They kind of look like this one down here. It's kind of a thicker plastic uh, sticker. So yeah, the, the color on the pedal hangers and the spacers, that's, that's really odd that they did all that, but they didn't paint the pedals. And you've got this carbon fiber. I think it looks nice with the Gotway Nikola on top of it. Uh, it's got kind of a, I'm not sure how it was applied. It look, kind of looks like it's uh, stuck on there, actually. Yep, I can feel it. I think this this uh, this is going to pop off at some point. And it doesn't look like it was applied. I think it's pretty tricky to apply this because it's a curved surface. Uh, yeah, it's it's wanting to come off <laughs> immediately. Same handle, doesn't uh, lock. And again, I'm gonna show you what I'm, how I'm gonna pat, fix this up a little bit just to make it a little more robust. Now, uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that it didn't come with a charger, a 100 volt charger, and a whole bunch of people have received these wheels and none of them came with a 100 volt charger. Now this, now, the, all, everyone that got these wheels, they did not buy them from E-Wheels uh, because E-Wheels doesn't have them. I, I don't even know if they're selling them right now. I don't believe they're on the website. Uh, so these are all direct from China, and um, apparently they're selling them out without the chargers. The chargers won't fit in this box. They're, they're quite a bit bigger. Uh, so... We're waiting for a week to uh, a week to probably a week or so to get another to get that charger. Wow! Did you hear that? That was a fan. Uh, that sounded horrible. <laughs> that was like really loud. Well, when I open it up, I'll take a look at the fan, see what I see what's going on with that. Uh, so no charger. If E-Wheels, that's the kind of thing, if you, if you bought this from E-Wheels, I don't believe that would happen. The ch chargers would come with the wheel. Or, worst case, Jason would give you the option, hey, do you want the charger? 
or do you want the wheel even though we don't have the charger yet and we'll get it out to you but I don't think they would just send the wheel out without a charger um, and finally some of you guys are probably thinking I'm nuts having the two wheels but uh, this is not my wheel <laughs> this is owned by Scott a friend who uh, bought this wheel and I tempted to think that he's off his meds a little bit by saying I could take the wheel he didn't he, he didn't he, he did not over open the box box remove it gave it to me and said uh, why don't you uh, check it out test it I'm gonna be riding it and uh, secretly I think he wants to he wants me to be the the, the test dummy to uh, <laughs> To demonstrate that the wheel works good and then uh, he can feel safe when he rides it but I'm, I'm just joking uh, Scott you know who you are and I really really appreciate you uh, trusting me with your wheel and giving me the opportunity to test it I really am curious to see how that how does it ride compared to my uh, 84 volt version uh, how does it what kind of uh, range do you get with it uh, yeah, I'm not going to be taking this up over Heat Hill. I think for obvious reasons, <laughs> I'm going to be taking my uh, this one up over Heat Hill. Wow, I'm sure you can hear that. So that's one check mark in the negative column. <laughs> uh, that fan sounds awful. I mean, you can probably hear that when you're riding. Okay, so I'm going to uh, shut off the camera here and I'm not going to show you to open these wheels. You just gently remove these covers under the screws. You got to remove this pedal. Uh, everything is on this side of the wheel. So if you want to open your wheel, lay it down with the light facing to your right. And this is the side you remove. And by the way, on a dark room, you can shine a real bright flashlight and you can actually see everything in here, just to double check. But um, yeah, remove the pedal, remove those. This pops off. And uh, so when I see you next, both wheels will be open up and we can see what they look like inside. Okay, here you have the difference. Speaker module is the same. Uh, battery con configuration is obviously different. These are a bit smaller battery packs. Same height, but they're not as wide, so they have more of this foam uh, spacing material in here. Uh, so the these are basically 800 watt hour batteries and these are approximately 600 and there's three of them in this wheel. So the control board on my wheel is here but in this case it's the battery is up here and the control board is here. The control boards look very similar in configuration. Of course here the heatsink is substantially smaller than this heat sink to be able to fit in here. Now I was curious, I thought, hmm, I wonder if Guy Wade uh, put a vent in the, ba in the back on many of their older wheels. Uh, part of the heat sink is exposed by a gasket to keep out the weather from inside the wheel, but the heat sink is exposed to the spinning wheel inside the shell. But no, they didn't do that. So again, there's no exposure to the outside. All the fan is doing is moving circulating air within the cavity. Now actually, I, th I think in the 84 volt, there's better circulation because the fan here is situated such as blowing air right across the MOSFETs, pretty much. Here, just based on the constraints where they where they had put the fan, the fan is blowing really across half the MOSFETs. 
So it'll be interesting to see how, how, uh, what the temperature is on the wheel as I ride it. It's interesting. This they put the beeper here, and there's a space for the beeper here on my shell. Yet they put the beeper over here. Okay. <laughs> um, what else? Uh, and I'll show you the. Um, I'll power up the wheel and show you the fan running in a bit. Um, the LED, which does not work, I just found out from another rider who got their wheel, and they said that the meter does work on their wheel and it shows proper hundred volt volts. So I don't know. I, with the wheel on, I kind of pressed on wires here and there to see if there was a loose connection, but uh, it didn't change. And there's like just a ton of this. Ah, I hate this. Really wish they'd go with better connectors that didn't require all this goop. It's just really. I mean, the the wiring harness doesn't look too bad, but it's just. It's a mess to get in there and work when you have to work in these control boards sometimes. Um, so that's how they look inside, the difference. So let me zoom in on this wheel and show you some more details. All right, let's turn this guy on. So again, you can see the voltmeter is not doing anything. Uh, but I wanted to show you the fan, so I'm just going to use a hair dryer here and uh, heat up the board a little bit. It shouldn't take long. It puts out a lot of air. So I, I can just hear it. It's a, it's just a, it's basically a crappy fan. It's a low quality fan. It's like you can hear the bearings. I think it's a variable speed. I'm not positive, but when it looks like when it's not spinning full speed, you can really hear the the poor quality bearings. Yeah, if they went with a better fan, it, I don't think it would be quite as noisy as that. Oh well, it is what it is. So they gave, so they gave up. Uh, they make a really silent motor, <laughs> no whine, but the I'm not sure which I'd, whether I'd prefer the whine or that, that, that fan is just really loud. It's, and it's not a, it's not a nice loud, if you know what I mean. It's, it could be a smooth sounding. Mine definitely does not sound as loud as that. So um, what other interesting, it's kind of interesting I see these capacitors, they're, they're rated at 160 volts. Quite a bit more margin than on my wheel, there are 100 volt capacitors versus the 86 volt system uh, voltage. Here it's 100 volt, but 160 volt capacitors. So a uh, bit more margin for the capacitors, which is a good thing. All right, I'm going to turn this off. Now, what I'm going to do as a, just an abundance of caution, 
This is learned from uh, the school of hard knocks for me. And that's these motor uh, wires. Now they're protected with this, uh, this sleeve material, which I think helps to keep, helps to maintain the, the temperature from getting too hot on the outside. Well, but they, they, it still gets pretty hot. Now I already moved it a little bit. This this over here was pressed up against the capacitor. I don't think that's a good thing. If you're if you're running this wheel, you want to have a gap between that. So I I moved this out. And what I'm going to do, basically, I, I kind of moved this like just tugged this a little bit. I'm going to put a dab of silicone here just to kind of keep that in place uh, this wire which is really critical this is your hall sensor cables there's six really small gauge wires this thing was wedged between these two <laughs> just it's like whoever is assembling these has no concept of the potential problems they just wire everything up you know they don't I don't know what's going on. So I pry this up. So what I'm going to do is put, put a couple t cable ties just to keep this separated. These cables, are, they're, they're pretty stiff. So, so in normal use, they're, they're not going to move and, and touch. So once I've established that there's a gap there, I don't, I'm not going to worry about these touching. But I do, I do want to keep this away from those hot wires. I'm going to keep this away from the capacitor. Uh, so let's do that now. Okay, so I've used this technique in many other wheels. I think it's a good way to just keeps keeps wires separated. So hopefully you'll see how this works. There. So hopefully maybe you can see how this cable tie is acting as a spacer. So these wires cannot touch now. But if you need to disassemble the wheel later, you can obviously just cut these cable ties away and uh, put new ones in. There, so this this cannot touch touch now. We're good, and um, let me get some silicone. I'm just putting a dab of silicone against the power cable and this plastic shell so I don't think this cable this wire is going to want to move anyway but that will definitely keep it from moving and uh, I'm going to put another, another little cable tie. Just to keep these battery 
lead some uh, I don't like the placement on that one. Let's try that again. I'm going to tie it up here. There. Again, I just want to minimize the possibility of any wires touching the main wires. And um, also before, when I was earlier, this middle power one was pretty much touching the, one of the MOSFETs. So, so I, I just lifted it up. And again, these are, these are stiff. They're not going to go anywhere once, once I seal it up. All right, so I don't see any other wires really touching. Anything that I can do about it. I think we're good. And seal it up. Hey, just for kicks, I want to get both fans to run. See, uh, you can hear the difference. Do you hear the difference in loudness, by the way? This one, much louder than my speak with than the, my wheel with a speaker mod. So here we go. Let's try mine. loud but much smoother sounding it's the same fan too it's just uh, not high quality so you really vary space in the batch I'm sure that guy cools off a lot quicker though Yeah, that looks like I got good bearings on my fan. And uh, Scott, you didn't. <laughs> Nothing I can do about that, though. Uh, I do have an, I have an extra fan, but it, it apparently doesn't work at all. Let's hear the, that startup sound again, the difference between the two wheels. Okay, I'll turn on mine first, followed by this one. Yeah, much louder ear piercing. <laughs> All right, now let's seal it up. Okay, as I reinstall the threaded inserts, I'm gonna use some thread locker. Make sure you do not use the permanent thread locker. And uh, <clears throat> Scott's wheel, there was none. You don't have to put a lot. Kind of hit and miss. Some of the Gotway wheels 
they have it. Some of them, they have it on one side, but not the other. <laughs> and then a typical crapshoot. any excess and let me show you where I'm going to put some more thread locker okay here's where the handle gets attached to the wheel and there's two screws here two in the bottom and two here now actually I'm not going to put I was going to put thread locker here but uh, these are tight and they're not they don't feel like they're moving at all. On my wheel, uh, as I recall, they were all loose and no evidence of thread locker. So Scott's wheel looks good. I guess in the future, if they do end up working loose, he can put some uh, thread locker. One other item I wanted to point out, I noticed on this version, so with this uh, fake uh, carbon fiber look it's um, which seems a little bit different than my wheel for sure it uh, hits this rubber tip on the handle so you see how so this is definitely does not want to move like mine it it wiggles when you're riding and you can hear it vibrate a little bit and of course if you did have a fall potentially they could fly out but uh, well, looks better in this wheel I don't I can't believe that's by design I think that's just a happy coincidence that this plastic carbon fiber is a little tighter fit all right time to place this so what I did before you don't want to place it too far down because then it's going to really get in the way of your legs. You kind of want it upper, higher where the shell is is tapering. Uh, so it's not going to, if down here it's going to, or certainly here, it's going to push out your legs further from the, from the bottom of the wheel. So for me, I determined that was about one inch from the bottom of this opening. And I'm just going to use a piece of tape. These are just going to provide guide posts <clears throat> so I don't have to spend much energy trying to measure perfectly.
There you go. Do the same on the other side. And yeah, we're almost ready to ride. Okay, the last thing to do to prep this wheel for lots of fun is to put slime in it. So I have other videos of this, but I'll just do it again on 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 this wheel. Can't hurt for you guys who are a little unsure. I'm just out of curiosity checking the tire pressure. So it came from the factor of 24 psi. I'm enjoying this tire at 40 psi. So again, when you guys, not, this is your first wheel. Don't assume that the tire pressure is good when you get it from the factory. Usually it's not. Usually it's pretty low. So when we're done, we're going to fill this up to 40. Okay. So this is a core a valve core remover tool that I got for the Z10 because it needs something long, but it's, it's it uh, it won't fit on this. So let me get another one I have. Okay, sorry for the interruption there. Ran out of power in my camera. So uh, now that the air is out and I can bend this a little bit. I can get this long one in there. And don't worry if something were to happen with this core these are standard. You can go down to your local automotive store and buy a package of these for a few bucks. Okay, so now using slime. Typically, it's not an exact science. Roughly four ounces in most of your 14, 16 inch wheels. That's kind of what I go with. But for these thicker, like MSX, this tire, I go with six ounces. And I go with eight ounces in the Z10 and the Monster. So uh, shake it up really good. I use a a flashlight it's gonna be hard to show this camera but I can see I'm actually right about eight inches of slime left and uh, again it's not an exact science get get close close enough And put six ounces. If I get a little more, not seeing a problem. If I get a little less, it's not going to be a problem. I'm going to leave this whole sequence in here just so you know. You really see how long it takes to do this. In case there's any doubts. First, first time you do anything in life, there's doubts. Okay, I'd say I put about four ounces in.
Let's see, that's about it. Close enough. Just making sure it's tight, very snug, but don't go overboard. And that's it. Now I should be filled up. About 42 out. 42. That's close enough. All right, this wheel is ready to go. All right, I'm going to do my range test tomorrow, and that'll be a separate video. Hope this was uh, interesting, and uh, see you guys later.